Good morning, everyone. I'm Morgan Donner, your friendly neighborhood uh, getting my hair done in the forest friend. Yes, I'm actually at an event and I'm mostly dressed and ready to go. Just needed to do some last minute hair veil arrangements and I thought it might be a good time to do some video. If you hear some noise in the background, it is because there's there's a whole event happening behind you. So uh, I tried to get away so I'm not disturbing everything with my uh, distinctly modern camera tripod set up here. But I did get some questions on the St. Birgitta cap and how you would use it, especially if you have short hair. So I think this video will help kind of demonstrate that a little bit for folks. Um, also, I just wanted to show kind of an alternate way to put up your hair with the cap. Uh, I've also gotten questions before about how to wear uh, veils and wimples on my like Instagram pictures that I've shown of that. So here we go. Let's do some uh, some quick, quick, how I'm gonna get my hair up video. All right, so first up, let's go ahead and get these braids put up. I've tied the braid off with a bit of thread stuff. Yep, there we go. Uh, you can also use like sticky substances. There are a number of weak glues from medieval periods you could use, but this is a lot faster and I don't have to worry about washing it out later. It's great. So quickly get your hair tossed up over your ears. I like to have my hair over my ears a bit here because it helps not have your ears poking out looking weird. But cover your ears with a braid and then use a pin. I like to use these U-shaped pins to put my hair up with. There are some finds with pieces of wire bent in the shape of a U that could have possibly been used for hair. It's hard to say when you find something in the ground what it was used for. Uh, but it seems like it's not an implausible thing that hair was a, a potential use of that. So toss your hair up. If your hair is pretty thin at the ends, then you can cross them over top right here. My hair is just thick enough that I get a little bit of a bump when I do that. So actually, while I'm thinking about it, we can take care of that. Just fluff out your braid right at that point where it would cross over on top of your head and make a, a big old bump. Okay, so by fluffing it out, it's also a little bit flatter. Okay, and then our other ear, check that point where they overlap and again, I'm gonna fluff her out a little. Airplanes, very medieval. There we go. So don't worry too much about these little flippy endy bits. Those are gonna be covered by the cap. So something that my short haired lady friends were asking about how to use the St. Birgitta cap is, well, how do you use it if you don't have that hair bulk in the back to help hold it in place? Well, you would probably just need to wear it a little bit more far forward using the kind of curvature of your head as the thing that's holding it on. Really not much different than how you would wear a bandana. Try and get it kind of centered here. And then we're gonna take the strings in the back, flip them up and over, keeping everything nice and taut as we go. And instead of ending it part way up, like I did before, there's no fullness back there, so there's no reason to do that. Instead, we're just gonna go all the way down and I think this should hold in place pretty well. Let's go ahead and get a veil tossed on. Veils are very fun and lovely and very common for a medieval look. Uh, I have a silk one here, very breezy, uh, but you could also have a little bit more sturdy one in linen. Uh, you can have a circular veil like this one, or it can be rectangular or square. You find lots of evidence for lots of different shapes. So for a circular veil, like this one, you could just simply find an edge and wear it like so. You know, toss a couple of pin-ins to keep it in place. Or if you have a crown or a uh, silk band, you could also kind of tie it in place. You see those. Uh, circlets are a pretty common thing that people will use to help hold their veil on place. 
I rarely wear my veil like this. One, it's this silk one. I just, I don't, it's not usually how I like to wear this. I'd prefer a thicker veil if I were gonna go for the uh, oval veil on the head look. You can also fold them in half and thicken them up. You get kind of a nice double layered effect. Here we go. So here it is on the straight grain. And you could wear it like this, fold it in half, the straight edge coming down, and again, pin it or uh, put a circlet on top to hold it in place. Again, not what I'm doing today. What I'm actually gonna do is refold this so that instead of being on the straight grain, right? Like your straight grain isn't gonna stretch much. Instead, I'm gonna change this so that it's on the bias. So a 45 degree angle across the veil. Okay, and you'll note that the shape and look of it is way different when I fold it that way, right? Now this is a circle. It's nothing fancy. It's just that it's stretching a crazy amount across the middle now because I'm folding it along the bias. So we're going to use that stretch to our advantage. Actually, before I forget, I'm gonna take off the three pins that I have up here. So I'm gonna need those. All right, so take your bias folded veil and it's going to become a wimple by tucking it up under your chin, wrapping it up and around and pinning top of your head. Okay, and there we go. So all of this can get tucked into the shift later. So you could just go about like this and that would be fine. Although it's not a very common look I feel to have just a wimple and cap, but no veil on top. So we're gonna go ahead and veil up. I am gonna go ahead and wear a linen veil today. I have a half circle veil. So this isn't a circle that's been folded in half. It's just a hemmed half circle. And I've actually sewn on the edge ruffles. There we go. You can kind of see. I realize the lighting's a little funny. But ruffled veils are stinking cute. <laughs> and they kind of actually provide a nice bit of structure to the edge of the veil. Some veils are going for a very loose and flowy look. I feel like ruffled veils often have a bit more of a structured, uh, heavy feel to them. In a nice way, I think zhuzh and tuck until things feel about right and pin everything in place. Where did my pins go? Okay, I think I'm gonna call that good enough. Hopefully you can see that little pin where I've attached the veil to the cap underneath and you can toss these back, you can leave them forward, a little bit more covering, a little bit more nun-like. The whole nun look came from somewhere when it comes to history. Uh, but it's very cute. I like the braids to be just a little bit more visible if I can. Ta-da! <laughs> so let me back up, give you kind of a little bit more of the whole look. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's just a quick little thing where I was getting dressed and I, I know I had some questions about how this whole thing looks and is put together. So here's a way of doing it. Not the only way, I'm sure. There's, there's lots of options, but here's how I've done it. And of course, don't forget to tuck in your wimple into your neckline uh, so that it's not all messy. Uh, if you guys have any other things that you would love me to show you, please do let me know. Put a comment down below and you guys have a wonderful, wonderful evening.